I keep seeing people who want to purchase a 5090, yet they have a relatively anemic CPU in their system that will hold back performance. What is your CPU guidance for people that want to buy a 5080 or 5090 instead of going for a $2,000 plus GPU that nobody can buy? What can people go? What can people go for that will improve their experience for a bit less money? Um, well, that's an interesting question. CPU guidance, first of all, for a 5080 or 5090, the answer is the fastest one you can afford always. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to be looking at, um, at this point, an X3D product, I think. The thing is, you can be CPU limited even there, depending on how you're deploying the settings in a game, right? Yeah. This is the weird thing about hardware balance. You know, you can be CPU limited, you can be GPU limited. Um, what do you think, Alex? Yeah, I think uh, anything other than the best of the best for a 5000 or even a 4090. We talked about when the 4090 came out that it was supreme. I mean, it's right in between the 5080 and the 40, you know, 5090. Yep. So it makes sense that that also, in that case, was also supremely limited in a number of uh, times and titles, um, depending upon the way you deploy settings like you describe. And I think you can really only get the best of the best. I would not recommend someone, uh, for example, with a I mean, you can see this build sometimes out there, and I see comments by it, but like the 5800X3D with like, a, a, I've seen with a 4090 and a 5090. And that's like, a, it's a really good CPU. I would never say anything really negative about it. But uh, if you look at the, the performance comparisons that we've done and other outlets have done versus the later X3Ds, processors uh, in games, like it, those are really big wins. Then you have the yeah. PCIe, uh, on top, getting upgraded for, um, you know, um, excuse me, Blackwell, which might end up being uh, helpful in certain games over a certain amount of period of time, you know, and just a whole lot of other stuff that comes with that new package. And I really wouldn't expect anything else. If you are still on a, like, a middling processor, like, it's not middling, it's a really amazing processor, but if you're on, like, a not latest X3D, I would maybe wait it out unless you have a GPU that is really causing you problems in games, then because otherwise you're looking at more like a larger fundamental rebuilding of the entire PC. Uh, mm -hmm. In which case, maybe don't spend a whole bunch of money on the currently very overpriced Blackwell GPUs, you know? Like, wait a little bit, see how the market settles, all these other things. Because right now, I don't, I don't feel like there's a lot of things that are coming into place exactly. Uh, we need to see things settle out a bit. Mm. Um, Oliver, you've got a 5090 paired with, what, a 13700? That's pair? correct, yeah. Yeah. Are you seeing any bottlenecking there? It's, it's uh, difficult because when you're in the midst of gameplay, unless you've got, like, Reaver Tuner running, and even then it's not clear that you're CPU limited. I guess you look at C GPU utilization for some idea. I think mm. it really depends on how you play games. And yeah. for me personally, I don't personally notice it that much because of how I'm setting up the game. So, so to explain, like... You know, the more real frames you want to render, the more the CPU is going to be an issue. But vice versa is also true. It's an interesting point. Right? So, yeah. like, if you're doing 4X frame gen to 240 hertz or something, most CPUs are going to suffice for that purpose in most titles, I would say. So, yeah. you know, for me, like, personally, I yeah, my 13700K in most scenarios probably is going to bottleneck me in CPU limited scenarios by 20 to 30% or something like that relative to 9800X 3D. That's probably within the range of typical performance variance across titles there. But in those games, I'm usually fine with just turning on frame gen. Like I was playing Space Marine 2. I beat it the uh, about a month ago and I used 2X frame gen to hit like 165 Hertz, something in that vicinity there, um, capped down from 170 Hertz on a, on a 170 Hertz panel. And I had that instead of like 120 hertz to 140 hertz or something without frame generation, right? That was a fine trade-off for my purposes. So in that case, there really is no difference between those two CPUs if you're using frame generation. Yeah, there's a lot going on here for sure. Yeah, you could you could use it without frame generation, of course, on an Android X3 and maybe end up with a better experience in aggregate, but it doesn't seem like that big of a... Didn't seem like that big of a... A downgrade to me to to turn on frame generation and have a good experience there but also like there are some titles like world of warcraft which i play like it, regretfully and shamefully sometimes uh, where for sure i can feel a difference between those two cpus so on the 13700k i feel stutters i feel issues at um even at 144 hertz on, on different panels 
and there you don't have frame generation natively, but there's no CPU that exists in the world that wouldn't leave you CPU limited to some degree with a 5090 <laughs> yeah, uh, with any kind of reasonable settings in World of Warcraft outside of like eight times yeah. MSA with RT shadows and things like that turned on. So I'd say, I'd say that it, to me, at least it depends, like just saying in the abstract, oh, you're CPU limited or not CPU limited. Like to me, that doesn't really make, not, not, not obviously to disagree, yeah. but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the, the scenarios in which these GPUs are being used, the resolutions that are being used, and the re uh, refresh rates that are being used, and the technologies that are being used are so variable between games that it's hard to say a hard and fast rule. But I would definitely agree, like, for sure, upgrade your CPU before you run to the 5090. I would agree with that. But I'd also say, like, it depends on what you're willing to concede in terms of fake frames, let's say, in a lot of titles. <laughs> I think another thing to bear in mind is the concept of, well, here, you, you know, there is the concept that you've got to be running your game flat out at maximum utilization from start to finish, when actually there is a much more nuanced way but, uh, that a lot of people will be gaming, which is to set a target frame rate, which is comfortably within the bounds of the CPU and the GPU, mm -hmm. and you just have a wonderfully consistent experience uh, throughout. I mean, that's that's another way of looking at it. You don't need to be running... Your, uh, your your CPU and your GPU at, at turbo nutter sp <laughs> speeds just because you want to max out your components. There's much to be said for simply having a good, consistent experience that's within the comfortable uh, capabilities of, of your PC, which is kind of like how consoles do it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when they're running at 30 FPS, you can be guaranteed that there's going to be a lot of time where the GPU is underutilized, even the CPU. Going to 60, the CPU is going to be doing a lot more work, um, as you know, and obviously the the GPU too. But you know, it's it's all about balance, really. Yeah, interesting one.